Hello everyone, this is You've Got 5 Options, a radio show where we prove that 5 is a magic number. Our experts will give you 5 tips on how to make your private or professional life better. We will solve your life challenge by giving you 5 different options to choose from. And our guests will answer 5 exciting questions while live on air. Tune in and feel the magic of 5. Hello everyone, this is Marta and this is Anna and this is You've Got 5 Options show and we are back with yet another amazing episode and another very special guest because as you know all of our guests are very special and not in that you know special like a special care guests they are just special because they are awesome and uh, today we are having uh, yet again a special guest who will talk yet again about leadership because uh, if you remember, if you are tracking our episodes, and I really hope you do, you know that we already had Diana Paulson talking about conscious leadership, and this time we will talk about compassionate leadership. So as you can see, leadership can have many different faces, and we are, I guess we are on a journey to find out uh, how to be a good leader. That's pretty much all, right, Dimi? Absolutely. Oh, this is Dimi, our <laughs> guest. Oh, I'm calling you Dimi, but your full name is Dimitar, right? Yes, my full okay. name is Dimitar. Yeah. And you have a very nice radio voice. So, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, can you tell us what is your full name and what country are you coming from? My full name is Dimitar Apostolov Cholakov. And oh, okay. uh, there had three names, of course, because I'm from Bulgaria. From Bulgaria. Bulgaria. Okay, please prove it with some something in Bulgarian. Can you say something in Zdravete Bulgarian? vi. Marta, please uh, say if this is Bulgarian. She was once in Bulgaria and she was five, so she's our Bulgarian <laughs> expert on I'm the sure show. That she knows what I said. Yes, uh, <laughs> five. When I was five, that was a couple of years ago. So. <laughs> But we had actually a guest from Bulgaria before, Stoyan. I okay. think that's your friend. Yes. And I remember I told him to say something in Bulgaria to prove that he's Bulgarian. Yes. And then he said it and I was like, I have no freaking way <laughs> <laughs> to verify that. And then Marta was like, yeah, I was in Bulgaria when I was five. It kind of sounds, <laughs> sounds like that. So Marta is our Bulgarian language expert. Do okay. you confirm that Dimi could be from Bulgaria? Yes, I confirm that Dimi may or may not be from Bulgaria. <laughs> wow. That's a very <laughs> interesting <laughs> confirmation. That sounds not sure. <laughs> yes, but we we believe you. We trust okay. you. You actually have a website and all, all the online yeah. presence. And if you would lie about this, your career would be ruined. <laughs> so <laughs> I knew that I wouldn't come here. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we know that you are from Bulgaria. Okay. But uh, thank you for saying something in yeah. your language. I think it's always a quite a nice gesture. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Dimi, I think the first question would be, how did you actually got here on our radio station? And uh, what do you want to talk about? Actually, um, the way this happened was uh, one of my friends, she's actually Polish. Okay. Uh, she actually wrote, uh, she was in, on your show. Mm -hmm. She's a instructor like fitness instructor you know oh, her? Yeah. <laughs> okay. i just want to see if you <laughs> yeah. yeah she she uh, she wrote that i can be part of this and i decided okay to contact you and write to you uh so she's we were together with her actually so let's say that her name is claudia uh, yes it's, yeah, it, it's becoming quite obvious yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh she uh, we were together on this um international camp in bulgaria to with her and we had a lot of great you know time there and she she just said okay that that can be good for you i said why not i mean i will always want to share what i know about what i'm doing mm -hmm. and generally leadership because mm -hmm. now this is my main focus so that's why i decided why not i just contacted you and just wrote to you that maybe that can be an option okay so you so, are not afraid of the radio definitely i don't think so i think i like you know sharing my stuff with mm -hmm. people especially of course if they're ready to learn and to get some new information and insights so definitely it's something which i would like to do 
Okay, so you have already mentioned that you want to talk with us about leadership. Yes. But I will uh, ask you a couple of questions based on your website because, Dimi, I don't know if you know, but me and Marta, we have seen you for the very first time. When was it, Marta? Two years ago? Oh, I really cannot place it in time, to be <laughs> yeah. honest. But can you place it in place? <laughs> I can place it in place and I can place it even with the title. Okay. U V S U. Yes. Yes. I love this. You know, just the headline. <laughs> we were like sold. You know, we we didn't even need to read yeah. more about the event than the uh, subject itself. And I remember that it was in the cinema and Cafe Paradis. Yes. In Aarhus. Yeah. So I guess was it two years ago? Uh, are we more or less? I think it was one and a half. Like it was. I think April or May last year. Okay, something it like could this. have been one and a half years ago. Yeah. So this was one of the first talks uh, you could say, which I res- decided to do on public, mm-hmm. on what I'm doing, mm-hmm. and yeah, I would say that that was a good beginning for me because I just wanted to share my idea how you can you know overcome yourself at some point and stop blaming people for not being whatever you want to be. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so that's why, yeah, that was... Hence you versus you. Yes, you versus you. I was thinking what I want to share actually at that point because I didn't have like clear... I was not clear exactly what I want to say to people at that point because I was working, I was coaching people. I already have started with doing some work with companies, but it was not structured in my head. And that's why I said what I was doing the last several years in my life. I mm-hmm. was asking this question and I said... I learned how to overcome yourself in many ways. Mm-hmm. And I think that helped me a lot to be here now. So that's why I decided to do that, just to share how maybe what is staying on your way and how you can go over it. Okay, because yeah. actually when I look at your website, Dimi, by the yeah. way, I applaud you for your honesty and I would say also vulnerability because you talk about your life uh, mm-hmm. in my story section. Those are actually quite popular stories now mm-hmm. on all the website of all the coaches and other people but uh, here actually it it kind of stood out from other things I read because it's very vulnerable mm. and it's quite uh, interesting because I don't see that the vulnerability in men usually please forgive me for my gender biased statement <laughs> and yes I am <laughs> most welcome to take the hit for it from the listeners but <laughs> men I think are mostly trying to play this stronger you know role than women women are allowed to be more emotional right so you were writing about um, your childhood and that you were coping with the low self-esteem and also uh, you were striving for this external approval and validation from others and you felt like you were living your life just to satisfy others mm. and and maybe measure up to something. Am I getting this correctly? Absolutely, yeah. So then you are mentioning a quite a first turn in your life and that was a, some sort of a car accident. Yeah. And you almost lost uh, everything that you possessed. Yeah. And something Actually, I lost everything. I don't know. But, uh, but yeah, everything was... Almost. Probably yeah. it, you had the clothes. Maybe I you. have the clothes on me. Exactly. Yeah, that was <laughs> so, and you said that surprisingly to everyone, I will quote yeah. you now, but yeah. mostly to myself, I felt relieved. I felt freed and excited, ready for a new beginning. Yeah. It felt like a big burden was taken off my shoulders. Mm-hmm. So would you say that that was one of the most defining moments in your life? Absolutely. Yeah, I would say one of the definitely most defined. I was, I was, uh, it was something which changed the direction of of my life in a way that I couldn't imagine before, definitely. And um, I just wanted to share it with people because very often we are so attached to our possessions, like whatever we possess, our, you know, everything material. And um, when you do that, you are afraid. A lot of fear is there. And when you lose, lose everything, I mean, almost everything, let's say, from this, the first 10, 15 minutes, I felt like very bad. I wanted to go and take it, but the, the car was over, you know, uh, with the fire and people just stopped me. I was not thinking at that point. But then after this 15, 20 minutes, I felt really that I felt free, like lighter, you know. At that point, I didn't understand what is that. Mm-hmm. I, I just couldn't because I, I wasn't so into personal growth at that point. But definitely what I realized at that point was that the next day you can go and buy everything, almost everything you lost, material I talk about. And that made 
made me to th- maybe thinking that I don't have to think so much about these things. I mean, I have them, I don't have them, doesn't matter. But I have to focus on something different. Okay, so this is when your journey yeah. of self-discovery and self improvement started, I, yeah. I guess, because then I'm reading in, uh, on, on your story, in your story that mm. you got one book from a friend, mm. just very, uh, what was the title of the book? Because I think it's not mentioned him. It's about American lawyer who after a serious breakdown decided to sell everything and go to Himalayas. Yes, exactly. So actually, the name of the book is The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari by Robin Sharma. I don't okay. know if you have heard about him and his this book but this was uh, his first book on this topic definitely and he actually the interesting thing is that he's expert in leadership Robin Sharma yeah Uh, but the thing here is that uh, after this accident I would say that slowly I started focusing more inside Mm -hmm. and this was the moment when I started and it, it was not conscious it was only you know I started it and then at some point I started you know searching for this stuff i cannot explain it but but then when he handed me this book literally i i I was totally vulnerable here and honest until that point beside the books from school i have read maybe one or two books in my life i was 20 21 years old and i couldn't stay read books before that but when i started reading this book book i couldn't stop reading it Mm-hmm. And I was, wow, what? And actually, before that, I tried to read different books. I said, I have to start reading. I have to get some knowledge. But I couldn't read these books. But this book is, I was, I, I, I read it, I think, for several days. Consider that I was going to university at that point. But there is something amazing in this. I don't know what it is, but I love it. And mm-hmm. I, that was, yeah, the, the point when I said, let's go. Okay. Yeah. And then you are writing that you actually really took it for the let's go, I love reading kind of thing because mm-hmm. you read a lot of different books. Mm-hmm. And then you are writing about uh, some sort of a turn around in your life that when you graduated, you started to work as an office consultant mm-hmm. straight away. Mm-hmm. Everything was looking great. So actually you have probably grew more confident and you started to perform well. And then you were offered a COO position mm-hmm. and suddenly you had a breakdown. Yes, yes. And uh, from what I understand in your story, that was the second turning point in your life. Definitely. Can you tell us a little bit about this one? Yes, I was, uh, when I started, after I finished school, I started this work. I was very good in sales, you know, repre- I was like office consultant, but definitely I was doing a lot of sales. And yeah, I, when I got the position, I was 22 or 23, I don't remember exactly. It was 2000, so 20, yeah, 23, 14 years old. And I didn't know what I'm started. I'm starting to do because at that point the company started growing. We had nine offices around the country. I had to. I was told initially that you know it's a sales management position, but then I realized he's, he's you know that is chief operation officer because I was operating everything in the company, almost everything, of course, not absolutely everything. But the thing was that at that point when I went into personal growth a lot, initially when you do that you start getting a lot of internal conflicts. And these internal conflicts, whenever it's very hard to resolve them yourself. And at that point, I had a lot of them. I was not sure what I want to do. I was not sure where I want to go. I was not sure is this the thing which I want to do. On top of that, I was not fully in alignment with the principles and values which the people around me were, were, you know, were living by. And all of this created a lot of conflict in myself. And there is one thing about me which which is very important is I cannot definitely do something which I do not feel in alignment with. And I was not feeling there. And on the top of that, I had to do many things, a lot of work. So all of these things I'm describing you now was inside of me. Mm-hmm. And I, on top of that, I was on this, um, just went to the capital of Bulgaria. So I, I don't know where I'm. Actually, <laughs> yeah. So it was, it was, you know, all of this. I think at that point I realized that it is very hard for me to to keep up with that, and that created generated a breakdown at that point. And um, I think if you say what is the right reason for that is exactly the internal conflict and the lack of clarity in my life at that point. I think what I'm hearing from you, and that's my own. Yeah interpretation so it can be totally wrong but it's like it's almost like a story of a person who went through something through some 
turnaround, like、mm. with this accident, right?、Mm. And then you tapped into a source of all this wonderful self-help mechanisms,、mm. performance,、mm. this, that. But sometimes we, our training is not complete because、mm. I actually think this alignment part is one of the most important. The mindfulness.、Mm. It's very easy to start to swallow those books about the performance and actually become. Really have a skyrocket progress in performance,、mm. but then the other things are lagging behind. I'm not sure if this、yeah. is exactly your story,、mm. but I have noticed some people who suddenly became very productive because they started to work almost like computers because they got those hacks from Seven Highly、uh, Something Habits. I never read that book. <laughs> seven Highly Habits.、Uh, yes, and、uh, you know they they、Korea. swallow those books. They swallow and they are becoming almost like as productive as machines,、mm. but the other things are still missing. Think. So、uh, I don't know if this is your story, but then I read by the very end that you actually started examining yourself to the core, and you went through group therapies,、mm. private cognitive behavioral therapy, counseling, human design counseling, NLP basics, and numerous self assessment tools and the briefs.、Mm. So you said by the end in your last sentence that you became a self. Discovery expert, and I guess that this is how you became a con,、um, compassionate leadership consultant. But first, before that, you also were a performance consultant. So,、mm. can you tell us, is it a switch, or is it something that goes together, is complementary, or are you just focusing on one thing right now? Actually,、uh, I would say that. Um, first, what, what what happened? So when I finished, when I became this expert, I went through that. I was I felt like more and more in alignment with myself. And、uh, what you said is actually absolutely true. I had a big trouble with this alignment at that point, and that's why I had to go to the core and really find the things which I wanted to find. Who I am, what I want to do. I'm going to talk later about that. Definitely about when we talk about leadership. But、um, then performance consultant. How I became was that I was when I finished because I start、uh, started studying after that in the coaching academy.、Mm -hmm. After I came to Denmark,、mm -hmm. I started studying in London. Actually, is the academy. I finished it and then started coaching. I decided I'm going to leave everything else. This is what I want to do. This is my life. Let's do it. And I started coaching individuals first. I immediately get got a lot of clients and had a lot of great sessions with them. But at some point, I realized that、um, I want to be in a little bit bigger scale. And when this happened, came the proposal from a company. They wanted to try to work with performance of their employees. So in this way, I started getting what I was doing before into company settings, and I started working with a company as a performance coach and consultant.、Mm -hmm. So and then. By the working with them, I because I I don't stop. I continue thinking. Okay, but there is something which is missing. Which is what I want to go. Where I want to. Who I am actually. I always ask these questions, and then at that point I realized that because I was working with another company to create the environment in the company which is great for the employees that they like, they love to be there, they do what they love, they are more creative than they were before of this kind of stuff, and when I started working with that. I started feeling a big connection, and、uh, actually, performance.、Uh, I realized that, of course, it's good to have better performance, but what if if you learn how to become leader in what you do, you definitely will raise your performance. So I realized that performance can be part of that, but the big thing is how can you people learn. How to become their own leaders? Okay. So this was this was the moment when I said maybe this is what I want to do. Maybe this is because I feel like this will be valuable for people, and they are gonna unleash the potential they have inside if they learn this. Uh、mm、huh. -hmm. Okay. So before we will jump into your five building blocks of compassionate leadership,、mm -hmm. you definitely just pointed out that this is not just for leader, let's say a manager, but also for self leadership,、mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay. So this can be used by anyone, by the leaders, by managers, but also by individuals.、Mm -hmm. Then I just have to ask you one last personal question before we will jump into the model, and、mm -hmm. that is because we are、uh, 
before Christmas. Until what age did you believe in Santa Claus? <laughs> That's a great question. I know it's a great question, guys. I'm obsessed already. <laughs> it's November. It's the end of November. And I am uh, going to ask all of our guests this question until we will stop recording till 2018. So, Dimi, you are the first one. Wow. I'm, I have yes. the honor. Uh, okay. I would say, <laughs> to be honest, I think I don't remember to be honest, and when I stopped believing, but definitely it was before five or six. Oh my God. Yeah, because I was I was getting that there is something there that my mother is buying my presents. I don't know how, <laughs> maybe I was very... <laughs> because those mothers, <laughs> they are not so smart, trust no. me. No, they say that there is there, you know, wonder that. I, I was just feeling that, oh, me. but also my mother is very honest. Mm -hmm. I suppose she couldn't, in a way, Keep, keep with up the with us, yeah. yeah. So I don't remember the age, but it was yeah before that, definitely. Okay, yeah. okay. So you don't <laughs> believe in Santa? I'm uh, slightly disappointed, but I will survive. Okay. Okay. So let's jump into your um, into your model, and we had a really fantastic conversation about your story, which okay. I uh, truly loved. So I allowed myself to continue a little bit longer, but mm. I guess we will be able mm. to go through the first building blocks because please just remind us the headlines. What are the five building blocks of the compassionate leadership? Just the headlines. So the, the first one is clarity. Then yes. you have walking the talk. Then you have compassionate connection, sense of growth and creative freedom. Okay. That sounds so far so good. Okay. <laughs> so Dimi, tell us a little bit about the clarity. What do you mean by this? So this is the first block. Yes, right. the first block is clarity and in my opinion, this is the basics. So everything in life, I believe, uh, when I was starting doing it, I said there should be something basic. You need to feel the base, you know, when you create house, you need to have the, the first part, then you build on it. And then um, the clarity is our basic as a people. First of all, is what do I want to accomplish? What's my vision for my life? Where do I want to be? in five or 10 years. And when I say where do you want to be, I don't say that you need to know exactly everything initially, but start the process of asking these questions yourself. Start the process, and now we talk about self-leadership. Of course, this can be done in company settings for companies, but we talk about this now. When you start creating the vision for yourself, there are of course many exercises you can do that, but by asking first the question where I want to be there, you slowly start getting some answers. Maybe immediately, maybe after that, maybe when you watch a movie, you don't know. But you need to start the process of that. And when you understand where you want to be in this time, five or ten years, and we put five or ten even, because when you put a little bit more time, you, you can become a little bit more dreamy. Mm -hmm. If you say in one year or six months, you, you cannot put yourself, just remove all the blinders you have because you're afraid you cannot accomplish it. But when you have ten years ahead, we have a little bit, oh, 10 years, so you start dreaming. You start getting, oh, I can do that, I can have that, I can have that. So and it's a psychological creates... trick to make people more open to to set up grander vision for themselves, yes? Exactly, okay. exactly, because they don't think, oh, but how can I accomplish that? No, mm -hmm. you just say, okay, I can do this. It's, it's a lot. Uh, you can put 20 even, if it depends how you see it, but 10 years is good, I think. And then after you have this kind of vision for yourself, you need to ask yourself the question, why? The question why is very important. Why do I want to accomplish this? Because we can have the vision, we can have the direction, but if you don't have the fuel for that, the gasoline, you know, you cannot go through the hardships. Because when you, you are going to get something big, you are going to have hardships. You are going to have a lot of stumbling blocks which you have there. Mm -hmm. And then you ask the question, why do I want? And the answer there is, I would say, one of the most important answers in your life. Once you get this answer, then I believe that you you can be unstoppable. And um, some people say, okay, my, I want to have money. A lot of companies when I talk. But when you hear how they answer this question, it doesn't sound that they want that. They, they believe they have to have that, but not they want that. I remember, I think I shared that recently in one of my talks, maybe LinkedIn, about um, uh, this guy, uh, one of the most popular motivational speaker, Les Brown, who said that the driving force for his life to become a motivational speaker is to buy his mother a house. So okay. I'm talking about this kind of very connected to your heart. Why? Because every one of us has some something which is driving you. 
uh, yourself, you know, to do something. And once you have have that, it's way easier to to get through this uh, moments of, for example, I would say initially when I started doing stuff, I was, oh, I have to become better. I have to be, um, you know, the best of everything, of the coaching or whatever. It It didn't give me this thing, you know. It didn't give me the feel. But once I answered myself the question, really the question why, I said, I would like to help people, to support people, to do what they love and what they are best at and make money out of this. So for me, this was the moment when I realized this is something I really want. Because for me, the feel inside is coming from seeing how people do what they're really good at. Because this is, for me, it's a beautiful, you know, when I see it. And they're happy. Okay, Dini, I have to say this is a this is a very a good explanation, and I'm very happy that you have uh, put your personal example and a lot of valid points. Actually, you know, like I want to be the best. Why do I want to be the best? Right. But now we have two minutes until the end of this okay. episode, so I would like to hear Marta and watch because she's extremely. I think I silenced her by accident <laughs> with this Bulgarian uh, language specialist. But yeah. Marta, you know a lot about why, and you know a lot about uh, driving forces. Do you agree with what Dimi said? I have to first of all say that Dimi, I have also finalized the coaching academy. Wow! And so it was uh, nice to hear that you did the same education in London. So probably we are brainstormed by the same uh, coaching. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. But it's great uh, this part about why and this answer to why it can be one of the most difficult and yet one of the most crucial answers that you are looking for and uh, definitely looking for clarity and allowing yourself to get some time and effort into finding that answer, that there is sometimes this uh, allegory of a piano of purpose, that you are just waiting for the answer to come in a big way. But sometimes we need to take quite a lot of little steps to get that clarity and to have that why, the big why question answered. But it's so crucial. It's very difficult to keep on going if you don't know why no. and I, I would say guys that i really like this that i really like this moment that you actually you finish the same coaching academy actually i finish ipec uh it's american academy which has a headquarter in london okay it's, because yeah but uh, you both were in london yeah, it, okay. both both of us but it's yeah i i know what i know the other academy you said yeah that okay was the other I, I thought that when you said the coaching academy from london <laughs> and you said personal performance coach i thought it was the same okay no. it was well but same. guys no. i really look forward to hear <laughs> yeah. actually more of of your talk yeah. and uh, i'm not sure if we finished the clarity topic but mm -hmm. probably we might continue in the second episode mm -hmm. because i really like marta take on small steps versus the piano of purpose so <laughs> thank you very much Dimi for being here thank Marta you. thank you very thank much you very for much. being our Bulgarian language specialist bye bye guys bye, bye you are listening to you've got five options radio show where we hopefully convinced you that five indeed is a magic number to catch up with our previous programs Apply to be our guest, send us your life challenge, or just to see how do we really look like, visit our website, the5options.com. We hope you enjoyed this episode and that you will come for more. That's all, folks! <laughs>